My friend cheated on his girlfriend and told me to be his alibi or else I wouldn't be considered a real Brody. I, 21M, have known my friend Matt, 21M, since we started college. We're in the same program and have been roommates since day one. Overall, I'd say Matt is a great guy, however, he has a terrible tendency to cheat. Throughout college, I think Matt had five to seven different girlfriends, and each of those relationships ended because he would cheat. Back in January, he started dating his current girlfriend, Jen, 21F, and has been with her far longer than any of the previous relationships. From my interactions with Jen, I know she's a wonderful person. She's very polite, beautiful, and clearly devoted to Matt. For the past few weeks, Matt has also developed a close relationship with his anatomy lab partner, Cindy, 21F. It's become pretty clear to me and my other housemates, Kyle 21M, Robert 22M, and Omar 20M, that there is some romantic relationship between them. We've even all met Cindy as she came by our house a few times. Long story short, Matt has informed me and the other guys that things between him and Cindy are progressing rapidly, and Jen is completely unaware of this. He mentioned that, for the foreseeable future, he'll be spending a few nights hanging out at Cindy's place. Here's the issue, Jan and her roommates don't live far from us, about a 7 minute walk away, so there's a good chance she'll come by looking for him, according to Matt. Therefore, he wants all of us to make excuses for his absences and potentially reassure Jen that he isn't up to anything bad. Kyle and Robert are fully on board with this, considering it the bro code, but Omar is entirely against it, and while he hasn't said he'd tell Jen, he has refused to lie for Matt and has been urging him to end things with Cindy. I would say I'm more neutral. I don't think what Matt's doing is appropriate, but I don't think it's my place to tell Matt how to manage his relationships. I also told him that while I wouldn't seek Jen out and tell her what's going on, I wouldn't lie to her either about where he is and instead just say, I don't know. We all argued about this for a while, and the general gist of things is that Kyle, Robert, and Matt all think I'm not being a true Brody for not being more cooperative. Aside from this, I don't think there is really much I can do. Moving somewhere else is both economically and logistically unfeasible, so I think trying to avoid stirring the pot is my best bet. Update 1. I'll start this update by saying Jen found out last night. Like Matt predicted, she came over to our house Tuesday evening. I saw her pretty quickly since I was also coming back from buying some food. She asked me if I knew where Matt was, and I said I didn't know, because I genuinely didn't know at the time. She mentioned how he wasn't responding to her texts and that she was worried about him, and I felt pretty bad hearing that. Kyle, who was inside, came out at this point and said that Matt was in his anatomy lab and then reassured her that he'd contact her once he was finished. She didn't seem entirely satisfied with that answer, but thanked us anyway and left. Once she was gone, Kyle told me that Matt was actually on a date with Cindy. Since Matt sometimes brings Cindy over, he'll text the house group chat before they come over to ensure that Jen isn't around. He did this on Tuesday night, and Kyle did alert him that Jen had stopped by looking for him, so he stayed over with Cindy on Tuesday night. Fast forward to Wednesday evening, only Omar and I are home. Kyle was with his own girlfriend, and Robert had an exam. Around 7pm, we got a text in the group chat from Matt saying he plans on bringing Cindy over around 8.30, and he asked if Jen came by. I told him that I hadn't seen her, and things went on as usual. I'll add that Omar has refused to respond to these specific text messages from Matt, so there was an expectation on me to clarify if Jen was here or not. A little after 8 p.m., Jen comes by with one of her friends, Carly, 21F, and they asked us where Matt was since Jen hadn't been seeing him a lot lately. Before I could even say anything, Omar told them to come back after 8.30, and Matt should be home. They left, and I did argue with Omar about his decision to tell them to come back since it was inevitably going to cause drama, but he didn't care. I did text Matt and told him about Jen potentially returning, but since he was driving, he didn't read the message. At this stage, I gave up trying to contact Matt and went up to my room. A little after 8.30, Matt walked in with Cindy, and not long afterward, Jan and Carly returned, Omar let them in by the way. Long story short, there was a lot of Jen yelling, Matt lying, and apologizing. I didn't bother coming down since I could hear it all from my room. After about 10 minutes of this, Jan and Carly left. Matt sent Cindy home after this, and he was pretty mad at us for what happened. I reminded him that I sent text messages, which he now saw, and Omar played dumb acting like he didn't see Matt's message about him asking if Jen was home, but confirmed to him that he told Jen to come back after the first time she came because, in his words, he didn't think Matt was dumb enough to go out with Cindy two nights back to back. Robert and Kyle came home after this point, and I filled them in on what happened. There was definitely some tension in the house this morning as Matt thinks all of this could have been avoided had Omar been more helpful. He also partially blamed Cindy for wanting to come over so often. Overall, Matt doesn't really seem to care that Jen found out and broke things off with him. He said that he'll try apologizing one more time, as he does prefer Jen to Cindy, and if she doesn't accept, he'll leave things as they are. As for Cindy, Matt has already told Kyle, Robert, and me this morning that he plans on ending things with her after the December exam season. He says that he wants to be single again by New Year so he can have a fresh start. Kyle and Robert think this is pretty hilarious considering how much trouble he got into to be with her. Things have ended more smoothly than I thought, and I have made it abundantly clear to Matt to keep me out of his relationship woes. I have also asked Carly how Jen was holding up this morning as we share a class together. As expected, Jen was very upset about the entire ordeal, and she and her friends consider everyone at our house, aside from Omar, to be complicit and awful. Update 2. I've been receiving a lot of DMs from people wondering how things turned out after the big reveal, so here's a quick recap. Jen did not accept Matt's apology. She has indicated that she, in fact, 
never wants to see him again. Matt is still with Cindy, and he still plans on breaking up with her after the exam season. According to him, Cindy is starting to feel pretty secure now that Matt is no longer with Jen, and has expressed her desire to form a serious relationship with him. While he does feel a bit guilty, he thinks it's best for both of them that he ends things with her before New Year's. Despite feeling guilty, or so he says, Matt has attempted to reactivate his Tinder account, but Kyle made him take it down. Kyle thinks it's too soon for Matt to do this since someone we know is bound to see him there, and according to Kyle, Matt needs to play up the angle that he's heartbroken about falling out with Jen. Kyle has smoothed things over with his girlfriend by claiming he had no idea Matt was cheating. Robert backed him up on this and expressed that nobody aside from Matt knew. While I did plan on telling Carly the truth about what was going on, considering how quickly Matt, Kyle, and Robert have been moving, I opted against this. Instead, I've told Carly that I also did not know about Matt's cheating. Yes, it's a lie, but since I was against Matt cheating, I don't think it's fair for me to go down with the ship, considering that both Kyle and Robert are getting off relatively scot-free. Apparently, I was convincing enough as Carly told me that while she herself doesn't think I'm so bad, Jen will need time to process what went down, so it's best to give her space. Again, I get it isn't the most appropriate measure, but I really don't think I deserve to be in the splash zone. Omar has expressed his strong disappointment in all of us, but at this stage, his voice has become ambient noise, according to Kyle. Fortunately, since I'm visiting my parents this weekend, I get to be away from the drama and hopefully any potential fallout. We'll have to wait and see if anything else happens, but I hope the worst is over.